Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Realm of Ori. In this video, we will continue with Volume 13, Chapter 2 on the Verge of Devastation, Part 1. And before we start, this video contains spoilers from the anime and manga series. And by the way guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to get notifications for upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. In the midst of the gunfire, Gobta also heard the order. Finally, still, we don't seem to have reached our goal, is that okay? That's not so bad, actually. Although the original plan was for us to continue to pester our opponent to play the trump card, we would be the first to go first. If they didn't scare each other a little, the powerful ones wouldn't have come forward, would they? Is that so? That's it. If it's our side, the powerful ones will be the first to jump out. So, isn't the leader of the Gobta army one of the four heavenly kings? Wait, although it is said that I am the four heavenly kings, I am the weakest one on the inside. Please give me a break. While some say yes and no there, not only Gobta and Gobchi, but even the members of the Wolf Rider soldier unit are more emotional than they are today. This is because they are waiting for Gobta to give the order. The rain of shells falls occasionally. The Green Legion had seen through this a long time ago and had been looking for a safe place to move. That's why Benamaru asked them to engage in, pretend to fight and lose big battles, and they don't really have to beat the other side, but pretend to be in crisis. Then take the time to let the other men intercept the Imperial Army, leaving them with no way to retreat, and fight to the next breath. When the magic tank shells are exhausted, the enemy side must send the best people to kill you, as before, Benamaru made very simple instructions. Gobta began to think back to the moment he heard the battle plan. Because Rimaru said those words. And Benamaru complied with it to give a new command. They don't have to be polite to the enemy. Finally, all the power in their bodies can be liberated. We are now free to attack. The Green Legion side has been handed over to Hakuro, no problem with this part, then this team will be handed over to Gobchi. Got it. So what's the Green Legion Army Chief's plan? I don't have time to play there now either. It didn't matter what the four heavenly kings were, after all, it was an order from Lord Rimuru. Lord Rimuru is watching, so don't be too bad. That's why, I'm going to be serious from now on. Gobchi and the rest of the team knew he meant it when they saw Gobta's eyes. Sitting behind the Green Legion, it is known without saying, is Testarossa. That's the way it is, Miss Testarossa. I'd like to ask you to split up with us next, okay? Yes, of course. I feel the same way you do. Everyone should do their best. So take care of yourselves, leaving those words, and Testarossa walks off at a leisurely pace. This one is really my type. And so, after seeing Testarossa leave, Gobta was like saying it's our turn to play. Then let's get started. He gave the order to all the subordinates, and the response of the others satisfied him. It's our turn, Mr. Ranga. The demon wolf in one. I've been waiting a long time, Gobta. Let our leader, Lord Rimuru, see the power we have. Gobta synced with Ranga's consciousness on both of them, liberating the magic within. The next moment, a black mist surrounded Gobta. Come on, let's make a scene. No need to show mercy. It's been a long time since I've shown any real skill. Even though the magic tank fired shells, it was still knocked down by the monster wolf's fist. Not only that, even if the magic tank attacks from the front, the tough black plume can still leave the wolf demon unscathed. This is due to the defensive effect provided by Ranga's multiple barriers, but the Imperials don't know it and it seems like a nightmare to them. Those subordinate soldiers began to panic. As Gobta Ranga let out a loud roar, black lightning came down over the magic tank force. Nearly a thousand magic tanks were turned into fortresses, which happened to be the subject of the black lightning. The men seated inside seemed to have ensured their personal safety, but the infantry unit, which had posed with the magic tanks as a barrier, had suffered a great deal of damage this significant damage to the defensive structure of the vehicle. Everyone retreat, get away from the magic tank now. The magic tanks erupted and burst into flames before they were evened. In this way, the magic tanks that join together to become fortresses only become stumbling blocks. On the opposite side of the barrier appeared a line of tanks that were aiming their cannons at this side. I've had enough of being bait. It's time for us to go for it. That's right. I'm sure Lord Rimuru is looking forward to seeing us do well too. Then let's get started. Without a moment's hesitation, Gopta burrowed into the barrier formed by the magic tank. Even in the face of the strong enemy waiting ahead, he didn't have the slightest fear. That speed instantly surpassed the speed of sound, and it was no longer possible for the Imperial General's soldiers to catch his movements with the naked eye. Let you see the results of my special training with Mr. Ranga. Let's see how far you can go with this. 
Blizzard Wolf Dance. A black gust of wind ran across the battlefield. At the same time, destruction from the supersonic shockwave hit the Imperial Magic Tank Force. The carefully calculated actions are effective in wiping out enemy forces and evolving into a tornado of destruction. A corner of the battlefield collapses in on this. As the Gobta began to drive them to the ground, the above changes also appeared. That was the Third Corps, led by Gabal. Following Benamaru's orders, the Gabal group was responsible for covering Gobta and the others. Although this task was beginning to become difficult, they did not panic and immediately carried out their next battle plan. That is, pretending to be defeated, like the Green Legion. Pretend that you're about to lose, so that you can stay glued and let the enemy perform a big trick. Although this battle plan was very messy, Benamaru ordered it without changing his colors. Not only that, but Gobta and Gabal also accepted it with an unchanged face. Our job is to get the attention of these blimps and not think about what comes after. If one fights with all one's might, it's not impossible to fight down. Obeying Benamaru's orders, willingly taking the attack unilaterally, so Gabal wanted the flying dragon troops to retreat. Miss Ultima, I have a favor to ask of you. What is it? We'll continue to pretend to lose, and then we'll do our best to act. Acting? Exactly. Even if we continue to flee, the enemy won't let his guard down. Therefore, we, the flying dragons, will deliberately bear the magic of the enemy. Oh, that's interesting what you said. So, what's the real purpose? That's what I thought, and now this situation is just the thing to get resistance to. Even if we get hit head on, we probably won't die. There's a lot of restorative medicine here, and I'm going to do an endurance experiment to make it look like we lost. Wait, General, are you serious? Lord Gabal can be an idiot sometimes. I really want to say, is that necessary now? Well, yes. Seems like fun. Permission to execute? I'm grateful. Then, hopefully, you can retreat from the scene. Gabal asked Ultima, who was the inspector, to lead the flying dragon forces in retreat. All that was left was Gabal and the others to attack the airship force. If I die, I'll hate you. I wish you hadn't thought of this experiment. I'm sure you'll be scolded for doing this later. Time comes to now. Gabal heard the voice from Rimuru. Listen up, everybody. The training is all over. And I'm going to go into dragon mode next. Fortunately, the rookies are retreating with Miss Ultima. It's just us, even if it's a little messy. Since it's going to be a mess, I think it's better to use my real skills in combat than the endurance training I just did. That's right. That's right. It's not like Lord Gabal's messing around didn't just start now. Shut up, all of you. Don't say anything, get moving. Follow me to the best of your ability. There's nothing I can do about him. Stop joking around and follow orders. All right, all right. You can't disobey a great general. Yes, Lord Gabal, please give the order again. Hearing those words, Gabal nodded with satisfaction. Then stared at the Imperial Air Combat Flying Corps that was confronting them and pulled up the volume to ask. I ask you, who is the overlord of the skies? It's us, the flying dragons. The aura on Gabal changed and the minions responded in earnest. The dragon warriorization is the last trump card they have hidden. Gabal brought in Midre as an instructor to train his partners to learn control. But as things stand, the success rate is not high. Even so they still used it. Because Rimuru gave the order for them to leave. They have no reason to doubt. Dragon mode. Together, the flying dragons unleashed the power they deserved. The dragon warriors are the strongest force in the Tempest, and their true fighting prowess is blossoming at the moment. 